So the bridge behind me here is the split from the Grand Canal onto the Barrow Way. Um, the Grand Canal actually follows kind of to the side of the River Barrow for uh, I think about 30 or 40 kilometers and we'll be walking on that to begin with and then we'll be walking on the river. Um, yeah, we were here last week uh, when we finished up the Grand Canal because we're only about a day out of, out of Dublin um, and now we're going to go this way instead of this way. So, yeah, uh, it's about a five or six day walk and we're going to go through Rathangan, Monastery Evan, Athai, Carlo and Boris and end up in near New Ross, St Mullins. Consistently annoying out that it's not the most motivating walking weather we've ever been in, to be honest. Just outside of Rathangan, where we're going to have at least two coffees, and um, behind me is what used to be used for washing clothes. Um, so basically, the invariably the women of the town would come out and wash everybody's clothes um, in the, what used to be clean water uh, from the canal um, by typically just like scrubbing over kind of a washboard. Um, Pretty sure it fell out of use about 80 years ago, um, but they really were like in use a long, long time. Um, that's all I got. We're gonna go have a coffee. Uh, um, the weather has been sad, but we've rewarded ourselves by listening to music, so that's been good, I suppose. So don't stop me now for the coffee. I feel like there has to be more coffee related songs. Just outside of Monastrevin, and this is as far as we're going to go today. The evening has cleared up pretty nicely, and uh, yeah, both kind of sleepy today. Very sleepy. Mm -hmm. I'm not in the mood to camp, really. I'm impressed by people who can like comfortably sit this way. Yeah. I really don't find it comfortable at all. I feel like we're in a rap album though. <laughs>
is the morning of day two. It's about quarter to eight, roughly, which it's kind of funny how when camping, that's like a super, super late start for us to just be back walking or be up walking. Um, whereas if we're like staying indoors, it's a pretty, pretty decent early start. Um, but yeah, it looks super, super nice today. I'm hoping that it will be a sunny all day. Um, and behind me is a quarry full of water that has been like this for years and years and years apparently. Um, the story that I heard yesterday was that um, originally when they were excavating the quarry, they actually went too deep, they went too far and they hit on the underground rivers which fed all the wells to the local farms in the area and all the wells dried up um, so they had to close the quarry and now it's um, got this huge lake in it and it's hundreds and hundreds of feet deep like incredibly deep apparently and they started filling it last year and um, to be honest it doesn't look like they've put anything into it like it looks the exact same as it did two years ago when I saw it the first time so um, it might take a while I think So if you've watched our Dingleway video, um, we met Tom Crean, or a statue of Tom Crean, and uh, this is Ernest Chacklebone, who is from a thigh, and um, who's at least equally big a deal. <laughs> a huge car full of people just drove past and all of them were like staring at me. We're in a thigh. Um, a thigh is the 50th the 50th biggest town in Ireland, actually. Um, there you go, that's what Wikipedia told me. Uh, also, it's the birthplace of Ernest Shackleton, which was genuinely shocking to me. Um, it's a nice town. We ate chips on a bench. Um, so we've been walking on the Barrow Line of the, ca of the Grand Canal for the last day and a half. Um, and that's essentially just a canal like uh, it's an offshoot of the Grand Canal um, and it follows the River Barrow quite closely this now is the Barrow and we'll be walking along it now for the rest of the, the trail um, the Barrow is the second longest or potentially third longest river in Ireland um, so we're going to try not to drown in it full of optimism <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty late today so um, we're going to find somewhere to put our tent down before it gets too cold let's go So this is the horse bridge. Because the barrow and the canal now meet, um, the horses or donkeys that used to pull the barges would have to cross over the river in order to be able to continue to pull the barges along the, the river now. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, we put that together all by ourselves. Ellie put it together and now I'm saying it, but there you go. Yeah. Okay, so I just realised that we didn't really film anything at the very end today because we were both super tired. Um, so here we are, um, outside of a thigh, heading towards Carlo. We the trail from Monastrevan, from our start point to our end point today, was probably, excuse me, only about um, 26 kilometres. But we did lots of wandering around in Monastrevan looking for coffee. And we also did a bit, a decent diversion in a thigh to get some chips. So I think we probably walked over 30k today. But not all of it necessarily on the trail. 
Um, we should have an easy day into um, Carlo tomorrow. I'm excited for that. Um, what I've really liked so far is that um, this is very different from the canal. There's a lot more grass, a lot more like banks. You're walking along the banks as opposed to like a gravel path, which has been really, really great. I prefer it so much more because I'm less focused on the ground and more enjoying the water. Like this has felt like a much more water and wildlife focused trail than I found the canal to be. The the Grand Canal and the Royal Canal I guess. Um, and yeah and now we're actually going to be following the real the actual barrow which would be nice to be on the real river as opposed to just a canal. Yeah. I'm probably rambling now. Can you see something? No. Why do you keep making noise? No reason. No, you look, that was perfect. What are you looking at? You look a little bit like Jabba the Hutt, but only if I manage to get you all in frame. <laughs> do you want to talk about how we've walked this bit before? I guess so. Yeah. Um, so you've actually kind of walked this before, this bit of the trail at least before. Um, for my graduate project for college. I walked from um, the apartment in Dublin to my um, family home in Tipperary. Uh, it was about 240 kilometers, I think, over six days. Um, and we used a bit of the Grand Canal and a bit of the Barrow Way to get me kind of half of the way there. Um, so it's nice seeing, like remembering bits because it's been like two years, so we don't remember most of it. Um, so it's been cool just remembering bits of it at least. Yeah. I think it's time for me to go to sleep. You look like you're trying to stuff a chicken. I don't know what you're talking about. That looks very graceful and dignified. I don't know. Are you filming? Yeah. So, mouthwash is probably the only essential toiletry item that I would recommend while wild camping for a couple of days. It's pretty hard to always get, you know, a toothbrush in and etc. If you've got mouthwash, at least it helps. Maybe not the only essential item, but like, you know, it's up there. Also, you see this? It's cuckoo flower. It's got more vitamin C in it than an orange. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> get our sifting out of the way. Um, because it's a very, very wet um, day three for us so far. Um, we're on our way into Carlo and we're gonna have to take a half day, um, which ties in perfectly with the horrible weather we're, uh, we're walking through. Um, so we started walking, I'd say, at about half seven-ish this morning. So hopefully we'll get into Carlo for early lunchtime. And yeah, like it's still a gorgeous trail. Um, the river has been looking very uh, moody and brooding with all the, the wind and the rain and the grossness that we've been walking through. Um, but the ground is still predominantly grass. Like, yeah, this has been great, if not cold today.
walked about two minutes out of Carlow. It is day number four. Already we're back in like lush green grass. Um, so that's a plus. We, yeah, today, I don't know where we're aiming for today actually. But the weather's nice. So because we were so weight conscious, because we have to carry everything, we have quite a small bag of clothes. And to get it all um, washed and dried, it's between like four and eight euro. It's really not expensive sometimes. It's a really great deal. And we get to feel like superhuman again because we don't stink. Um, but sometimes I forget to mention that like all our all my socks are wool, and some of my clothes are wool, and yeah. Yesterday I had a I had a casualty. My my very purple, my fancy purple socks shrunk. I could probably use them as mittens at this point. Um, I'm gonna try and stretch them out and hopefully I can stretch them enough. But it was a little bit sad. I forgot to yeah, tell her. But we are wearing clean clothes again, which is really nice. It's been a few days. Um, the sun is shining, so I'm sure we'll get all sweaty and make them stinky again. Um, we met a couple of people in Carlo and every person we talked to told us how amazing that the section that we're walking into is. So I'm really excited. Like every single person has been saying how amazing it is from here on. And it's been pretty like pretty great so far. So I hope I'm not like building up too much in my head. I'm expecting like fanfare as we walk through the grass announcing our arrival. No, no, I'm joking. Uh, it should be really nice. That's it. this entranceway is um, like an 1800s, 1820 entranceway to a house back there called Von Gregnam House. Um, it's one of the only bits that actually really survive of that house. I mean, the, there is a thing that looks like a house back there, but well, in any case, this is a national monument as evidenced by that sign. So, I thought I'd tell you about it. That's all there is to know. Uh, I found that out on the National Inventory of Architectural Heritage uh, on archaeology. Uh, we'll it out. Yeah. Are you recording? Yeah. So it's funny the difference that having grass underfoot makes. Um, the, the whole, this whole trail basically, we've been saying how nice it is. We've been saying how nice it is. And um, <laughs> it's kind of, like, uh, we've been saying how nice it is. Okay. okay. It's funny the difference that having grass underfoot makes. This whole trail, we've been saying how good this is and how much we enjoy it. Um, especially in comparison with the Grand Canal, which we only just did. Um, and I think the biggest difference by far is just that this trail has grass and the Grand Canal has gravel and tarmac. Um, it's been so much nicer. It feels much more like nature and much more like you're out in the wilderness rather than kind of just walking along a road. Um, so I do think they might be changing this into a greenway or you know a cycle path or something at some stage. And I think that means that they may put tarmac over this. And to me that would be really disappointing. Um, I understand that because they would like and I would like more trails to be more accessible to more people um, and that if you have a buggy or a wheelchair then you can't sometimes access these trails um, but I do feel like putting down 120 kilometers of tarmac is a little bit depressing um, on something like this uh, and I was I wonder if there's a different compromise that could be made um, but I wouldn't really know so um, yeah, it's really good trail anyway. I've had a good time.
Right. Yeah. So we're just leaving Lachlan's Bridge. Um, Lachlan Bridge. Lachlan. I think so. Well, Lachlan's Bridge. L e i g h n and something. I don't know how you spell it. Anyway. So we're just heading out of Lachlan Bridge, and it was a very very pretty little village. And our walk has been very, very pretty and sunny. If anything, everything kind of looks like like a HDR photo. <laughs> like everything's like super saturated, like the blue of the river and the green of the trees. It's all been very wow. Um, we had some stellar cheap coffee. Um, so we can power on to Bagnallstown and maybe get ice cream in Bagnallstown. I just think. Sounds good. Yeah? Mm hmm. Sure? Yep. I didn't realize that Carlo was so pretty. I feel like I'm learning a lot about like, it's like, oh, Carlo's pretty and Roscommon's pretty and all these places that I never really actually pictured as like places are really nice. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, when you think of Roscommon or you think like, or if I think of Carlo, I think of the place in the middle on the way to Kilkenny or Dublin, I guess, sometimes. like. I don't think of it as an actual place. Um, and it's been really, really nice seeing just how nice it is here. I even went to college in Carlo and I had no idea that it was as pretty as this. I never bothered to walk two hours down the river to see how nice this town is. So like, I think when people give out about Ireland not being the touristy, beautiful place that people think that it is, that people outside of Ireland think that it is, I think that those people should go and look first before they judge because it really is an incredible place and without, if you only experience the, the town that you grew up in or Dublin or whatever, I don't think that you see the country in as accurate a light as you could. I don't know. Does that sound okay? Yeah, it sounds good. Does that sound really angry? <laughs> I'm a little bit angry when people are like, oh, it's terrible, I hate it. Even though I used to be that kind of person. Because it's not terrible and you shouldn't hate it. It's kind of terrible. Ice cream is great. So it's like late afternoon and we've just come through Bagnallstown um, and this is our last town of the day. So we stopped into Super Bayou and I swear if we got into a, conver into a conversation with um, a nutritionalist or like food person or somebody who's interested in like food science we'd last about 12 seconds before they start slowly backing away and then like bolting when they hear the like horrendous balanced diet that we kind of live off of um, so in our bags right now we have one and a half free cakes uh, a carrot cake uh, a banana just one banana um, two packets of chorizo um, we have a cinnamon roll cake, coffee roll cake thing that we're going to eat to follow up our ice creams. Wine gums. Oh yeah, and you got, you got wine gums. Oh, I forgot to get a Lucozade. Yeah, normally we both have Lucozade, water, you can see it's a real balanced, lots of green, no green at all. <clears throat> so that's what we're kind of living off of seeing as we don't have a stove with us at the moment. We do like to stop in cafes because we really, really like coffee. So when we're there we often get a, a bowl of porridge because they're just a couple of euro usually. But that's about as varied as our diet gets at the moment. I'm sure that's why we're... Uh... To be fair, we have all the major food groups. We have at least a couple of fruit every day. Yeah, we have at least one bananas. or two bananas each. Uh, chorizo, that's yeah. some protein. Lucasade, ice cream, carrot cake, etc. All the sugar, that's all you need. 
Yeah, you don't need you don't need like vegetables or like anything. No. Nope. Oh, all okay. good. Just sugar, chorizo, and um, yeah, whatever the other thing was. More sugar. Um, the reason why we're kind of living on these foods is the like is the calorie to money ratio. So in a fruit cake, there are a lot of calories. So we eat half a fruit cake each every evening, and that's like a full dinner. And they're typically like two euro for a fruit cake. So getting that weight to calorie to money ratio is really uh, key in our in our success <laughs> at walking. Um, yeah. Don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just kind of funny. That's funny. Nothing. Yeah, you're coming. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Where did we camp last night? Um, this is Sly Guff Lock, or Shli Dove Lock, so I don't really see where it came from, but anyway. Um, yeah, we camped here last night. Um, it was perfect, as camp let's go. Um, we met the old retired lock keeper here, whose family used to live in this, uh, in this house behind the tent. Um, back 50 or 60 years ago before they all moved to Boston and uh, he told us that in the winter the river still like even now even though it's converted to be navigable with the canal and everything it floods in the winter and so they would move upstairs in the house every winter because it would just flood and be unusable and they'd have a little rowboat that they'd take over to the, uh, the far bank um, which just it was really interesting to meet him. Um, yeah, it was uh, a nice, a nice evening. I enjoyed it. So today we're going to walk to St Mullins, probably somewhere near here anyway. Um, it's only I think about 28, 29 kilometers from here. Uh, so it is a thing we could do in a day. Whether we actually feel like it, I don't know. And also, it's a bit of a late start this morning because it was cold. Um, so yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Um, Thank 
that's really exciting. I am yet again going to say what a lovely town we have reached. Um, this, like walking to here, gave me real kind of um, like flashbacks to the Nora Valley Way, which we um, did, which we've done. So if you like this one, if you like Barrow Way or like the Nora Valley Way, you should do do the other one because they're very kind of similar, really beautifully scenic walks. Um, this one's just a lot longer. Um, yeah, Regnana seems very nice. Apparently it's where a lot of people winter their boats um, in the area. That's all I gotta say really. Do you want to talk about how we're gonna try and finish it? I think we'll probably try and finish it this evening. It's like it's evening time but it's never stopped us from walking before. So nice to get it all done today. That'd be five days, which I think is pretty standard going. <laughs> Very average walking of us. Before we reach the end, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons, uh, but especially this week, I want to say thank you to uh, Shoni Ryan, and Sasha uh, Dalika, and Foil Arms and Hog for their wonderful support. We really appreciate all of you, and yeah, it means the world to us. This is the uh, lock at St. Lawrence. It's the last lock on the canal section of the barrow. Um, beyond this lock, uh, it's tidal water, which means that you can't really trust it. In most cases, with a small craft or a barge or whatever, it's, um, that's not where you want to be. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's also, there's almost no towpath from here down, as far as we know. Um, yeah, I've, I've had some, some foot pain for the last, I don't know, 60 or 70 kilometers, so we're going to take a couple of days off and see if it goes away. Um, and of course it will go away and everything will be fine. Yes. Yeah, but here we go. This is the end of, oh, I suppose I could do the whole bar away end thing here. I don't know. Do you want to end it here or do you want to take, uh, no, no the town, this. yeah. Okay. okay. Let's, let's finish it. Well, that was a solid 8 out of 10. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what you're looking for in a trail, mm -hmm. really. But yeah. it, was a, it was really, really nice. It was really gorgeous. Yeah. And what a perfect evening to finish on as well. Mm. We're in St. Mullins, uh, which is the end point. It is the site of an old monastery, of which I don't know the age because my phone has died. I'm gonna go with 6th century church and then, or 6th century religious settlement and then, you know, a monastery from the 10th or 11th centuries. That would be my guess. Or even actually 11th and 12th centuries. That would be my guess. I guess I'll find out in a few minutes when we walk up there. Um, and it is the end point of the Barrow Way. We did. Um, we did it. That's Trail 25. So, that so yeah, that was the worst one here. Let's do it. How are you doing it that way? <gasps> anyway, um, so here in St. Mullins, there's a cafe. It's closed right now. And that's all. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the monastery. And the monastery. So. <laughs> Um, which is closed, yeah, so we don't have coffee, uh, which is why we look so tired. So it's a bit of a longish walk. Uh, it's probably five days, uh, probably six days actually, if you're a normal human being. Um, we pushed it a little bit far most days because it is all flat, so we didn't have much of a problem. Mm. Um, and there are so many options. You don't, yeah. like, you can walk a section, you could cycle, and then cycle a section, and then can there are, the next bit. yeah, there are yeah. a couple of companies that, like, yeah. meet you at your starting point, give you a boat, and then collect the boat at the end of the day, wherever you finish. Yeah. This trail is probably the trail we've seen the most people use. And doing activities. Doing things on, yeah. yeah. There's been endless people fishing. There's been tons of people out on kayaks and boats today in particular. Um, mm. There's lots of people who live on the 
canal and just take their barge up and down every once in a while. Yeah, they go walking, uh, walking dogs. Lots of people dogs. walking, walking dogs. And we have actually seen actual distance walkers on this one, which we can say about yeah. only one other trail, I think. Um, yeah, we've seen other people through hiking, which is cool. We did have a conversation with one at like seven in the morning, so I can't remember your name, but American guy from Arizona who's a nurse and is going to a farm in Wexford. <laughs> that was nice to meet you. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, so, and, and of course the, the even better upside to this trail is uh, you can camp basically anywhere along it. It's a very low stress camping trail, yes. um, but don't do fires, it's just rude. Yeah, there are lots of really good ice cream stops. Um, the towns all along the way are amazing. I still can't get over that a thigh was the birthplace of Ernest Shackleton. Unbelievable. Um, and also John Tyndall uh, grew up in Lachlan's Bridge. And if you don't know who that is, Wikipedia. We're getting some looks. Also, the people have been really nice. Mm, yeah, um, super lovely people. Extremely Go nice people. Yeah, yeah. And almost no road. Virtually nothing. It's almost all um, soft underfoot, grass and things. Almost, yes. Yeah. More than we can say about pretty much any other trail. Um, if you have enough money, you can stay in a and b the whole way down. Um, hmm. So you, you pretty much, you, it would be a fantastic holiday option, I think. Yeah. Um, so do get out and do this one. I think we've said everything at least once, if not yeah. three times. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Let's go out there for now. There are many churches um, from, and I was right earlier. Um, many churches from ranging from you know the, the 7th century to, to the 19th century the Protestant church that is the most well kept is from the 19th century um, and there's a high cross from probably the 10th or 11th century um, slightly damaged but still pretty good um, yeah just a really incredible place really um, I'd say they're Tens of thousands of people buried in the grave right there. I am now clean. Happy to inform you. Just gone through my wilderness coronation. And yeah, I am now queen of Ireland. No, that's what I'm saying. Um...